Hello folks, welcome to Edupedia World and I am Abhinay Gupta. Today again we will continue with the topic, the meeting of the board and its powers. So in the previous two lectures we have seen the details of section 173, all the various subsections 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Right? We have seen the provisions for the notice, the provisions for holding the number of board meetings. right? and have also discussed the various kinds of questions that could be put forward on that topic and the various kinds of questions that have come in, your, in the previous examinations. Today we will discuss a different topic. Today we will take up the, board, the voting at a board meeting. Right? How, is, how are the votings conducted? Right? What are the provisions for vote? Who participates? Who does not participate? What does the article say? What does table F say? These are the various kinds of topics that we'll be covering today. Right? So when we talk about voting, right, what comes to your mind? If you if you get an imaginary picture, that if you are sitting in a board meeting and then uh, you put a resolution forward and you ask them to vote, what what scenario do you think happens? The moment you ask the voters, the directors, to vote for or against the resolution. Right? How, how does that take place? When you put forward a question, you say, how many people support it? And then the directors, they raise their hand. Right? And then you count, okay, there are four directors who are supporting it. How many do not support it? There are three more directors who raise their hand. Okay, three of you do not support it and the rest are neutral. They, they do not want to vote for the resolution. That is, that is very much possible and that is a normal situation. Right? It is nothing weird at that. So yeah, that is, it is very simple. That is how voting is done in the board meeting. Right? You don't have a poll where you have a ballot and you go and as per your position in the board, you get the, you get the, your vote gets a weightage or something like that. Right? Because the votes for every director is equal. Each director has one vote. No matter if the director is also a member of the company, and holds like 20% or 30% of the shares of the company, that is irrelevant. We are not holding voting by the poll method in the board meeting. The voting in the board meeting is always held by show of hands. Right? Now, now how many votes win a resolution? Right? There, there can be situation when the act or the article may demand a unanimous resolution. Right? So a unanimous resolution, now we see, is only required by the act at specific situations or if the article says. The article may say that, okay, all the resolutions in the board, in the board of my company will be passed by a unanimous resolution. If the article says so, then all the resolution will have to be passed by unanimous resolution, unanimous voting. Otherwise, it will not be passed. There is no majority concept. Right? Otherwise, if these, if these two situations do not prevail, then the majority votes win. Right? If majority is for the resolution, the resolution is accepted. And if the majority is against the resolution, the resolution is lost. Right? Now, what are, the, uh, what are the various situations or where does the act actually require a unanimous resolution? Right. So, you know, what is a unanimous resolution? A unanimous resolution is actually a resolution where the resolution is passed only with the consent of all the directors in the board meeting. Right? And there are uh, basically two situations where the act, the Companies Act 2013 itself says that a resolution, a unanimous resolution needs to be passed. Right? One of it is the requirement of section 186. Right? When the power to make loan or give guarantee or security or make an investment lies with the board, those kind of resolution will be passed by a unanimous resolution. You cannot give away a loan. You cannot make loan. right? You cannot give guarantee. These are uh, critical financial matters. So for this, the act says you will always have to file a unanimous resolution because if there is a situation that two or three directors do not agree to giving out loan or guarantee to somebody, that means there is a problem with it. That means that there is something negative to it, right? If there is anything negative to giving loan to somebody, restrain from giving loan. Better take the safer route. So for this provision, the act says that all the directors will have to 
B with the resolution. They'll have to support the resolution. If all the directors are happy, if all the directors think that yeah, giving out loan or giving out guarantee to the in this particular situation, right, or making this investment would be beneficial to the company. If all stand at the same platform, then it would be passed. If there is a con conflict, if any one of them denies, if any one of them thinks that no, this investment will not be beneficial for us, we will not make the investment. Right. So the act says that in situations of K, uh, section 186, the board needs to pass a unanimous resolution. And the only other place where you need a unanimous resolution is the appointment of a managing director. Right. But this is not a situation of appointment of all the managing directors. It is when you are appointing a managing director and that person is already a manager or a managing director in other company, in some other company. Right. Because if he is a managing director, like if he is the main director, if he has the whole and sole responsibility of the company, of the other company, then do you think that this director will be capable and will be able to slash out some good quality time to spend in your company? Will he be able to manage the company? Will he be able to bifurcate that time constructively? If you think yes, if all of you think yes, then we'll keep him as a managing director. Else, if any one of you have a point to raise and if any one of you think that no he will not be able to do it we will not consider him to be a managing director in our company so you you can understand that yes if act says in these two situations that you will have to pass a unanimous resolution then the act is correct right it is valid it is reasonable to hold a unanimous resolution in these two situations right and when we know that if in the case of article if the article says that these, these, these matters, these matters related to these topics would always be passed by unanimous resolution. That means unanimous resolution. If it says that all the resolution in my board will be passed by unanimous resolution, then all the resolution will have to be passed by a unanimous resolution. Right? Otherwise, except the two cases specified in the act, and if the act, if the article does not interfere, then normally the resolutions are passed by the majority right and who would constitute this majority only those director who are first of all present in the meeting either physically or via video conferencing right and who are voting for or against the resolution that means the members who are not attending the board meeting or and the members who abstain from voting for a resolution will not be considered to be a part of the majority right so if we take an example for the same consider a situation when the board has 13 directors right eight of them are present for the meeting four of them vote for the resolution and three vote against the resolution so what do you think is the majority the majority over here are the four directors right three directors are the minority one director who has abstained himself from voting will not be considered and the five directors who did not even attend the board meeting will not be considered. So six directors are out of scene, we are not considering them. The remaining seven, four are the majority and three have lost the resolution. Right? That means finally the resolution is passed because the majority is for the resolution. Now consider another, another situation. Like if you look at the same example, there were 13 directors eight attend the board meeting and suppose the one who had abstained from voting now votes against the motion. So what happens basically? Basically you have four directors for the motion, four directors against the motion. So what do you do in such situation? What will be the, res uh, what will be the result of the resolution? Will it be passed? Will it be lost when there's a tie? So generally when there is a tie, the resolution is deemed to have been lost right remember those words the resolution is deemed to have been lost but in that situation the chairman is the only person who can still uh, vote in favor of the resolution like he can apply his casting vote in favor of the resolution that because as per regulation 68 of table f the chairman of the board may use his casting vote that is the second vote in case of a tie right that is the provision uh, that is given in the model of table f the regulation 68 of table f 
so direction has a uh, so a chairman have a casting vote so if he gives his casting vote in favor of the resolution only then the will the resolution be passed otherwise in the case of tie generally the resolution is deemed to have been lost right i hope now you are clear with the fact now one more important point that is to be kept in mind when we're talking about the vote that the director can participate only if he is present in the meeting and the second condition is if he is not interested interested so what do we basically mean by the term interested we will be covering this topic in detail when we are covering section 184 that is the part of this chapter but if i give you a brief then in, if a director or his relative or a body corporate in which he is a partner or uh, body corporate or a partnership firm in which he is a partner or proprietor of any firm of any proprietorship firm or something like if he is in any way related to any firm any body corporate his relatives or anybody and they are interested in a contract like if that contract is passed or if the company takes up the contract even that director or the relative or the body corporate is going to have some of the other financial benefit or not even financial some of the other benefit right then that means the director is interested because why we do we use the term interested is that the director would want the contract or the resolution to be passed because that will be beneficial for him so when we uh, talk about the director being interested and we do not allow him to vote for a resolution because we consider that the director's vote would be biased right so that is the basic reason why an interested director is not allowed to vote in a resolution in a board meeting so the one liner statement that a director cannot participate in the vote if he is absent from the meeting or if he is interested and even if he votes being interested or being absent being absent he cannot vote because we are voting by show of hand being interested even if he votes then his vote would be vo void his vote will not be calculated will not be counted and the last thing that we need to understand that in a director's meeting we do not have a proxy in a board meeting no director can appoint a proxy right although the act is silent on this point the act nowhere says whether the director is allowed to appoint a proxy or whether the director is prohibited from appointing a proxy nothing of that uh, such is contained in the act but as a general law as a general rule we understand that a director is not allowed to apply a uh, to appoint a proxy right we could also make this conclusion because the term proxy is uh, or the use or appointment of proxy is basically a requirement of the act which means that if you want to appoint a proxy the, it has to be specifically provided in the act and when the act is silent on this point we would deem that the act does not want the directors to appoint a proxy because if the provision of appointing a proxy would be would if the provisions would have to be applicable then the act would have provided it right and one more thing that the article does not have the power to authorize the directors to appoint a proxy so in any case the directors cannot have a proxy in the board meeting right the act is not supporting them neither is the article given the power to support them right so in no situation if you get a question also just understand that in no situation can you have a proxy in the board meeting so that was all about the provisions of the voting at the board meeting board meeting yeah so i i hope it is clear with you you have understood the provision very well you know where we have a unanimous resolution otherwise where do we have majority even the concept of majority is not given in the act right for that we refer the module uh, of the model of table f that is regulation 68 right according to that a vote is to a resolution is supposed to be passed with the majority votes right now we'll discuss the question that have appeared in your past examinations in CA final November 2004 and June 2009. So in both the examinations you had a similar kind of a question where uh, that actually relates to the example that I had already given you. Right? They told you yeah these many directors are there in the company, right? And two or three or four of them have voted for the resolution 
and some of them have voted against it and the others are silent others have not attended the meeting so do you think the resolution is passed right so you will go exactly by the way i told you in the example right people directors who are not present or and who are interested right will not be allowed to vote and their vote will not be counted if they have voted right and the directors who have abstained from voting will also not be a part of the majority and then we see the majority amongst the director who have voted either for or against the resolution and if there is a situation of tie you know that the resolution is deemed to have been lost unless and until the chairman he casts his casting vote right because he has the power to cast a second vote and this power is given to him again by regulation 68 of table f and so far i assume that you people are familiar with the procedures of writing your answer the format of writing your answers right so initially you will have to give the provisions of the act that yes as per regulation 68 and table f the resolution would be passed by unanimous resolution if it is provided by the article or required by the act otherwise we would go by the simple majority and then we give out all the other provisions like every director has one vote and all what i have discussed already in the beginning of the answer and then you will give your analysis and then the conclusion right so that is how you would answer the questions so that will be all for the lecture today we'll continue the provisions of the other sections like section 174 75 and so on in the upcoming lectures so until then this is abhinay gupta signing off thank you bye bye